All right, so this time we're going to continue looking at different ways of factoring and finding zeros of polynomials, um, specifically um, writing them as their linear factors and a couple other ways. Um, and so generally, to get all the way down to the linear factors, we're going to want to find all the zeros, and then we can rebuild those factors from the zeros. Um, all right, so our first one, we've got three terms, x to the fourth, 25x squared, plus 144. And again, like that last example in our last notes, this is in that form of a quadratic trinomial, where the first variable, x to the fourth, is the middle one squared. So if it's x squared squared is the first variable, which it is, it's in that form of a quadratic. Okay, so we're going to try to factor this out. Um, I want to set my equation equal to 0. Um, I know it's going to be x squared and x squared and that they're the same sign, both positive. Okay, so, but now I need to figure out what factors of 144 add up to 25. And obviously the first ones that usually come in your head would probably be 12 times 12, which would be 24. It's kind of close, but, but not really. Um, so let's do this. We'll do a factor tree here. Obviously it's not going to be 1 and 144. Um, 2 and 72, that's not going to work. Um, 3 does go in there, because if you add up the digits, 1 plus 4 plus 4 gives me 9, and 3 does go into 9. So let's see, 3 goes into 14 four times, with 2 left over, and 3 goes into 24 eight times, so 3 and 48. Um, 4 does go in there, because when 2 did, my other factor was still even, so if I cut that in half, it's 36. Um, still not close. 5 doesn't go in there. I believe 6 does, because both 2 and 3 did. Um, 6 goes into 14 twice to get to 12, and there'd be 2 left over. 6 goes into 24 four times. Okay, so 6 times 24, no, those aren't our factors yet. 7, I don't believe, goes in there. 8 does, because when 4 went in, my other factor was still even. So 8 and 18, that's 26, that's really close. Um, I think 9 does, because when 3 went in, this was also divisible by 3. 4 plus 8 is 12, and 3 does go into 12. So if I divide this by 3, we end up getting 16. Um, and you could keep going. I think our next factors are 12 and 12. So there's a lot of factors of 144, but the ones that add up to 25 are 9 and 16. So it took us a long time to come up with those. All right, so now we can try to break these down. Um, they're not differences of squares. There is no factorable way to, to do product of squares, at least and get nice integer or rational answers. So we're just going to use zero product property. Set them equal to zero and solve. x squared plus 16 equals zero. And we subtract 9 and take the square root. We're going to get x equals plus or minus 3i. Um, same thing over here. Subtract 16. We get x squared equals negative 16. And when we square root, we get x equals plus or minus 4i. Um, so we end up with four imaginary zeros. And we can rebuild our linear factors from those zeros. So if positive 3i was a 0, x minus 3i has to be a factor. And of course, we know the conjugate pair has to also be a factor from last time's lesson, and the other zeros right there. Um, and then same thing with our four i's. x minus four i and x plus four i must also be factors. And these are our four linear factors. Um, so this would be for part b. We found all of our linear factors. Um, this would have been part a. We found all the zeros here. And then c, use your factorization to determine the x-intercepts of this function. Well, because all of my zeros are imaginary, there is no x-intercept. And in that graph, um, we know because it's even, the two tail ends are going the same direction, and that leading coefficient of 1 tells me they're both going up. And this graph is just above the x-axis. Um, it's actually this graph right here. So there it is graphed. The x-axis is way down there. My y-intercept, which happens to be... a uh, looks like my vertex. I don't think it's exactly my vertex, but it's way up here is 144. And you can see that will never cross the x-axis. It's way down there. 
All right, let's take a look at our next example. Uh, kind of a similar problem. Uh, it's in that form of a quadratic, so we'll factor that again. This time, though, once our product is factors that are irreducible over the rational numbers. So meaning we only want to factor it where our factors have rational numbers in them. So no uh, square roots, um, no imaginaries, things like that. And then as the product of factors that are irreducible over just the real numbers. So we don't want any imaginary factors, just the real ones. But they can be irrational that time. And then C, factor it completely. So we'll get all the way down to those linear factors. Okay, so let's start off. Um, factoring this thing out, I know again it's going to be x squared and x squared. Uh, factors of 13 that subtract to 12. Uh, well, I should go back and say they should be opposite signs because that's a negative 13. And the factors of 13 that subtract to 12 are 13 and 1. And in this case, the 13 needs to be negative, so they add up to negative 12. Okay, so here's my two factors. Um, if I went to go set these equal to 0 to find the zeros, when I subtract 1 over, so if I go back and set this equal to 0, say we were finding the zeros. I don't need that one. All right, so we would take x squared plus 1, that would equal to 0. x squared minus 13 is equal to 0. Here we'd add 13 over and take the square root. And we get plus or minus 13. Now that does not simplify. That is an irrational 0, or irrational zeros. Um, over here, we get x squared equals negative 1 and we end up getting plus or minus i. So we get two imaginaries. So we go back to a. It wants the product of factors that are irreducible over rational numbers. Well, if I rewrote my factors with root 13 and negative root 13, those are irrational. So I don't want that. That means I want to keep this as x squared minus 13, because 13 is a rational number, or negative 13. I also don't want imaginaries, because rational numbers are real. Um, so we're going to have to go back and leave it as this factor, x squared plus 1. So in fact, this is as far as you can factor it and keep it over the set of rational numbers. So this would be the answer for a. It's just x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 13. For b, we're going to write it as the product of factors that are irreducible over the real number set. So these are real. These are not real. So I can go ahead and break this down as the two factors, x plus root 13 and x minus root 13. Okay, those are irrational, but they're real. Um, but I don't want imaginaries in there, so I'm going to have to keep this one in the form where there's no immediate imaginary number. So this would be completely factored out for part b. Um, and then c is to finish factoring completely. And that means we can use all of the zeros to just write all of those linear factors. So x plus i, x minus i, those conjugates. And then x plus root 13 and x minus root 13. So if you get all the way to these linear factors, that would be like as completely factored out as you can.